Hello, I'm Mark Peters, and I'm glad that you could join me and all of us here today for the launch of Quark Express 9. Now, over the next half hour or so, you're going to see all the amazing ways that Quark Express 9 can be used by designers and publishers to harness the amazing capabilities that are offered by new devices, such as uh, e-readers, smartphones, and tablet devices, such as the iPad. All this together will once again help to revolutionize design and publishing. So, without further ado, to get us started, I'd like to introduce Ray Schiavon, who is the president and CEO of Quark. Ray, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. So, Ray, I know we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the future, Quark Express 9 in particular, but I'd actually like to start by uh, actually going backwards a little. What are some of the, the major changes that have occurred in publishing since Quark Express was first launched? What, 20 years ago? It's exactly what you alluded to, Mark. 20 years ago, Quark Express clients only needed to worry about publishing to a single media type, print. Today, with the onset of numerous digital devices, including the web, smartphones, tablets, publishers are now faced with a new challenge to have to dynamically publish to all of those devices. In publishing to all those devices, there's also a need to personalize and customize that content and publish it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year round. How do you do that cost effectively? Those are the two big changes that have happened in the last 20 years that are impacting our industry. So what is Quark doing to help address these changes and challenges? Mark, Quark has broadened its mission. Today, with the need for dynamic publishing, Quark and our partners are focused on assisting designers and publishers in automating, customizing, personalizing content for the distribution to multiple devices. Together, we want to bring to market a complete solution for designers and publishers to effectively and efficiently create and publish that information in a design-rich fashion to both print and to digital devices. So, Ray, I heard that phrase, a dynamic publishing, clearly a very important one. Where I'd like to start to drill down is to understand why is dynamic publishing equally applicable, whether you are a sole designer or a large organization? Whether you're an individual designer or part of a large organization, your time is precious. Anything you can do to reduce the time and cost in creating information, collaborating to pull that information together, and then personalizing that information to make it available to print and a large number of digital devices is exactly what dynamic publishing is all about. Can you give me some examples of the types of customers you've been working with at Quark to help address the, these publishing challenges? Absolutely, Mark. There's some great examples of Quark clients that are using our technology today to solve dynamic publishing problems. Customers like Recruit Media, one of the largest publishers in Japan, came to Quark to help solve a dynamic publishing problem. How do they meet their corporate goals by bringing together effectively and efficiently the information from more than a thousand Quark Express users, collaborate and pull that information together to create a design-rich publication in a cost-effective manner. That's exactly what dynamic publishing is all about, solving that problem to meet the corporate goals and producing a high-quality, design-rich product. Another example is UNICEF, a global humanitarian organization. Quark was very pleased and proud to help UNICEF solve what turned out to be a dynamic publishing problem. UNICEF is often faced with a challenge to get information in the hands of prospective donors and proponents and governments to get them the information they need to allow them to assist UNICEF in helping them solve challenges around the world. Quark was able to provide the technology to allow UNICEF to create a web-based system that would allow them to create and disseminate information to prospective donors around the world in a cycle time that was reduced from many weeks to days and oftentimes just minutes. So this is another example of where Quark technology can help compress the publishing cycle and help people create and publish dynamically information around the globe. Thanks very much, Ray. You know, it really is amazing how much publishing has changed, as well as the challenges faced by designers and organizations today. 
So to hear more about Quark's strategy for digital publishing, let's talk now with PG Bartlett, who is the Senior Vice President of Product Management, I believe, PG. Hi, Mark. Hi, PG. Good to see you. So what exactly is Quark doing for customers who are interested in digital publishing? For digital publishing, we're doing three things. First, we're helping our customers create compelling digital content that their customers will be willing to pay for. And second, we're making it easy and cost-effective for our customers to publish to digital devices like the iPad. And third, we offer freedom and flexibility. We're not locking our customers into any one platform or technology. Great list, PG, and thank you. What I'd like to do is just drill down a little further and expand on each of those three things that you mentioned. Now, the first one, I think, if I recall correctly, was you were talking about helping customers to uh, provide a more compelling experience. Let's talk about the first generation of digital publishing. The first generation, which we call Digital Publishing 1.0, is characterized by devices like the Kindle, with black and white displays and static, mostly text content. Devices like the iPad are at the forefront of Digital Publishing 2.0, with bright, full-color displays capable of rich, complex layouts and multimedia content. This new generation of digital publishing plays to Quark's strength in design. Our customers will be able to go well beyond the simple page-turning capabilities and deliver rich, engaging, compelling experiences with audio, video, and interactive capabilities. Which all sounds great, and I'm sure users will be very pleased, but I want to come to the second thing that you talked about, which is, so what about cost, and, and what about uh, ease of use? Well, one of the main objectives in our support for digital publishing was to take the programming and complexity out of the process so that all you need is a designer to publish digitally. And that's not just for the desktop. We're also supporting digital content in our enterprise class dynamic publishing software, which can automatically produce publications in countless variations for multiple audiences and to multiple types of media, including web, print, and digital. The ability to have designers participate fully in the digital publishing process is crucial for professional publishers, individuals, and corporations to achieve success in the digital marketplace. So opening up digital publishing to designers is important to organizations of all sizes in taking advantage of the possibilities of digital publishing. Let's actually hear from the design community in terms of what they're actually thinking are the possibilities and challenges with digital publishing. What we're doing today is exactly the same thing as we were doing 20 years ago. We have a different tool to do it with. And the trouble is that tool changes so often that we have to relearn how to use it. And uh, you know that's a, that's a really big deal when your job is now not just being creative, but being creative in volume. Digital design is actually important because if you don't know it today, your clients are going to go on to somebody else. I mean, I find that happens now. You know, people, they say they want it tomorrow, they want the instant gratification. If you can't deliver, they go find somebody who, who can deliver. So you have to know it, you have to know the learning curve, you have to keep on top of it all the time or you lose that job. We've always had to adjust and adapt on the fly. Absolutely no question. We've had to do that. So if, if it can, comes down to a program that can actually has an ease of use layer into it that we can assimilate into every single thing we're doing as far as uh, not mass production, but creating things for our clients that they come to expect a certain level of quality, oh my gosh, that would be, that would be tremendous to have that. That would be a gift to any designer. What's needed is a tool for me to do digital design without having the intervention of developers or someone with technical expertise. Well, as you have programmers that are not designers. You have designers like me who are not programmers. And you're expected to do it all these days, and that's the biggest challenge. Ultimately what we do is, is, is give someone a good user experience. So whether it's 2D, whether it's 3D, whether it's motion graphics, it's all the same thing. You still need a good designer. And I don't remember the learning curve being so difficult back then as it is now with the interactive because it just takes one little character encoding to totally screw up a page. You need to be competitive in your market and you need to stay true to what your, your clients are asking you to do. They trust you. You have to be on the forefront. The, the entire paradigm is different now and is going to be different tomorrow and is changing every single minute. Uh, it's impossible to keep up with our delivery methods anymore. Our tools are changing at all times. But uh, the, the way that information's going to be distributed is, I mean, you haven't seen nothing yet. And it's, it's big, it's huge. 
So it's obvious from the video we just saw that the design and publishing community has real needs when it comes to getting to grips with everything involved with these new digital devices. I'm now joined by Gavin Drake, who's the Vice President of Marketing at Quark, to go into a little more detail, if you would, Gavin, on what Quark is bringing to market to help with uh, digital design and publishing. Thanks, Mark. Why is it that whenever a new media channel presents itself, we expect creative professionals to become programmers? Web publishing meant learning getting to grips with HTML, and we heard a little bit about that in the video. And designing for Flash meant learning ActionScript. Well, just as Quark Express has taken the coding out of both web and Flash design, we're now going to do exactly the same with digital publishing in Quark Express 9. You already have the tools. You already have the skills. And quite frankly, with Quark Express 9, you already know how to do this. We're introducing features that will enable you to design apps and interactive content for the iPad and a range of other digital devices. And to do this, we're delighted to be able to talk about three new digital publishing feature areas in Quark Express 9. The first of these that I'm going to introduce is App Studio for Quark Express. App Studio enables you to create custom apps and design interactive content and publish that directly from Quark Express. Quark Express 9 also will include a brand new dedicated tablet workspace, as well as familiar tools that enable you to take your print content and convert that across to rich interactive content, or you can create brand new content specifically for the iPad. Using App Studio for Quark Express, you'll be able to rely on dedicated layouts for both vertical and horizontal orientations, tag individual boxes with pre-built interactive behavior, build slideshows, audio and video players, pop-up windows, web overlays, hyperlinks, even scrollable layouts within your design. And you'll get full WYSIWYG control over every aspect of your design. In fact, if you can design it in print, you can now design it for the iPad. Our aim with Quark Express 9 is to make publishing to the iPad available to everyone, whether you're a large organization or an individual designer. And to make that point, we're going to hear from a small UK publisher with a big brand and big ambitions. Hi, I'm Sally, and I'm one half of Blag. But along with my twin sister, Sarah, we've got a magazine and we've got a website. And also now we're getting involved in the world of digital. We started it while we were at art college in 1992, and we've grown it across the years into a glossy magazine. And now we're getting ready to embrace digital. Digital publishing is really important and exciting at the moment because people are saying magazines are dead, which they're not, and I think it's going to reignite life into actual print magazines, but also give people a completely different experience. Because magazine editors have been able to gather up content in so many different ways. We have, so we've got our filmed content, our photography, our audio, which is recorded, and it's really nice to be able to deliver a real sort of different experience and almost like a give people more choice. Digital publishing is important to Blag Magazine because it opens up a brand new avenue for us where we can supply our content in brand new ways. Successful publishing to the iPad for me is definitely about an experience that's created for the iPad, not one that's pulled in from a different format and shrunk and placed there. And for us, it's a really great opportunity for us to create something for a solo experience, a dual experience and a group experience whereby we can have beautiful design and written editorial. We can have audio and we can have video. When I started researching how to take Blag from print to digital, I pretty much went in a full circle. I went from designing it in Quark Express for print and looking to see how on earth I could get it done for digital without compromising or without paying a fortune or without just putting something on that looked like kind of PDFs or a glorified website. And when I finally found Quark Express were doing software that was going to allow designers like myself to create apps. It was just, it brought me back full circle. The difference for me with working between, with Quark Express between print and digital, it really isn't that much because you know the language, you know where all the toolboxes are, you know how to mix up your colours. There's just those tiny subtle little differences between the print and the digital. So for me, it's just, it's just, just makes sense. The way Quark Express has embraced digital publishing, I think, is absolutely wonderful for designers because a lot of them have really kind of pulled back and they've got quite scared of the industry because so many technical people have come forward. But for me, and knowing a lot of other designers, I think 
once this opens up and this opportunity comes forward, they can just actually take however many leaps forward, a lot of leaps forward, to really get back in there and become important people within the creative industry again. I think what's really exciting is it hasn't been completely complicated, it's been quite seamless and quite easy, but the results are really effective and really exciting. From everything we've just seen, clearly the possibilities this brings to designers are quite astounding. Let's turn and take a look at how easy it is to produce engaging, interactive experiences for both the iPad and other digital devices using Quark Express. To do this, Dan Logan, who's the product manager for Quark Express, will give us a demo. Our goal with App Studio was to get our users up to speed creating richly designed interactive iPad apps without the steep learning curve that they're used to with digital publishing. We started by making App Studio a first-class layout type in Quark Express dedicated to the production of iPad issues. If you want, you can easily convert existing layouts that you already have, but we find that most of our customers want to create new layouts specifically designed for the iPad. When you create a new project, you'll see App Studio as a new choice under the Layout Type menu. You also select the devices and the orientations that you want to support. In this case, I'm designing for the iPad in both vertical and horizontal orientation. So I select those options and click OK. Cork Express has a lot of features for dealing with multiple layouts within a single project, and we've put all of those features into the App Studio. For example, in this case, once I'm done creating a page, I can select all of those objects and promote them to the other orientations within my project by right-clicking and selecting Digital Publishing, Sync to Other Orientations. Those objects are automatically added to the shared content palette and then instantiated in all of the other layouts within this layout family. We perform some basic mappings so that we maintain relationships between boxes. For example, in this case, we have a full screen picture box and that box is maintained full screen in all other orientations. Other things have to be adjusted by the user. For example, in this case, I actually want to replace this photograph with a different one specifically for the horizontal orientation. So let's skip ahead a bit to our finished layout. Once I want to add interactivity, all I have to do is add a picture box at every location where I want interactivity to occur. And I'll tag that box using the App Studio palette that you'll find under the window menu. In this case, I want to add a video to my design. So I'm just going to draw a picture box, go to the App Studio palette, and choose the type of interactivity that I want. In this case, I'm going to select Movie. For the different interactive types, I then have to specify a source for that multimedia content. In this case, I want to use a local file. This is a video that I'll embed into my issue. Click the File button, browse for the video file. Once I have that selected, just click Open, and then set up the properties of that video player. In this case, I want it to play within the context of the layout, so I uncheck full screen only. I don't want it to autoplay, and I do want it to close at end. That's all I have to do. When I export my iPad issue, Quark Express will create the video player and the controllers required to play back that content on the iPad. You use a similar approach to adding sound. In this case, we have a pull quote that was printed in the magazine, and we want to uh, play back the audio recording of that pull quote when the user gets to this page. So we'll create a small box below the pull quote at the size of the controller that I want. We'll go to the App Studio palette, select Audio as the interactive type, browse for the file, which in this case is an MP3 file, Set the options, I don't want it to autoplay, and I don't want to set a caption for that, and I'm done. The last enrichment that we'll do is a slideshow. The same as the others, I just draw a picture box, go to the App Studio palette, tell it I want the box to be a slideshow, and I have a few more options in this one. 
I can choose between a simple slideshow or a slideshow with thumbnails. In this case, I'll do a simple slideshow. And then I need to add the content, the state of each of those slides. So I'll click the file button, navigate to my slideshow images, select the first one and then shift click the last one and click the open button. And it will add those images to the contents tab of my slideshow. I can also set up parameters for the entire slideshow itself, such as whether or not it automatically animates between the states of my slideshow and whether or not those slides automatically pan and zoom while the user is viewing them. Once I'm done tagging my interactivity, I just select File, Export, Layout as iPad Issue. Cork Express will generate the output files for all of my design and my multimedia, as well as the logic defining how I set up that multimedia, and I can test my issue on my iPad. Dan, thank you. That's absolutely inspiring. We've seen so many well-known publications promote their availability on the iPad, but no one's actually been able to show us how they produce that beautiful content or actually get it published on the iPad. What you've just shown is how Quark is giving control to designers and allowing them to produce compelling, interactive experiences that doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. But isn't digital publishing about more than just creating apps and publishing to the iPad? I mean, PJ, you, you mentioned uh, freedom and flexibility. What, what other opportunities are out there? Oh, yes. The iPad is just the beginning of the digital publishing revolution. Since the iPad debuted, over 100 tablets have been introduced. Changes in technology and changes in business model are going to come fast and furious. Our customers have to be in a position to react quickly to those changes, and they can't afford to get locked into a publishing technology that limits their choices. So what precisely is Quark doing to help expand its customers' choices in digital publishing? Mark, you've just touched on the third key digital publishing capability that I mentioned earlier, which is freedom and flexibility. Let me give you a couple of examples. First, we're providing technology so that our customers can create their own iPad apps and deliver content to those apps. Second, we're working with KNFB Reading Technologies, who makes the Blio e-Reader, an app that will be available on all platforms, including Mac, Windows, Android, Palm's WebOS, and Apple's iOS. Blio will be shipped on tens of millions of devices this year, with content distributed by Baker & Taylor, one of the world's largest distributors of print and electronic content. So in short, we're helping our customers create their own apps, which they can distribute through their own marketing channels, and also get their content in front of tens of millions of potential consumers by also publishing to Blio. Digital Publishing 2.0 is here, and I think that Quark offers you the easiest, fastest, and most profitable way to join in the digital publishing revolution. Your partnership sounds like another significant example of how Quark is making digital publishing a reality for designers and publishers. So let's hear from Bob Nelson and Mike Angelo from Baker and & Taylor and KNFB Reading Technologies about what this partnership means to designers and publishers. Baker & Taylor is the world's largest distributor of physical and digital media. We actually distribute physical and digital media into 40,000 customers over 120 countries worldwide. And the reason we partnered with KNFB Reading Technologies is our publishing partners who were distributing the media for had a strong need to bring new digital media to market across categories that were incremental to the best sellers they were selling via the e-ink technology and the dedicated e-readers over the past couple years. Our relationship with KNFB is that we signed an agreement to be their partner to distribute Blio about a year ago to our marketplace, which includes the network of educational institutions, libraries, retailers, and our new channel of device manufacturers and mobile carriers. We chose Blio because our publishers were asking us for an opportunity to put new digital media to market that wasn't based on black and white or e-ink technology with the existing e-readers. They wanted to take advantage of the newer devices coming out like tablets, next generation smartphones, and other type of computing devices that really show full color, highly interactive, immersive content. The biggest need the publishers had after finding a reader that could really show the content was the ability to enhance it. And a deal for self-authoring tools with Quark and Quark Express really shortens that, that uh, supply chain cycle and dramatically reduces the cost to get the digital media to market. Let's hear from Mike Angelo from KNFB Reading Technologies 
to tell us more about the Blio e-reader. People are, are constantly looking to see what's next. Um, e-reading in particular is in its infancy. So as people are trying to figure out exactly what they want from an e-reading experience, really the, the, the E aspect of the reading is, is the critical part. What more can I get from my book by viewing it in this format? Uh, and, and that's really all about how can you enhance the book from what, it's, what it is in its printed version to what it is on your machine or device. Uh, and that's having things like read aloud, studio recorded audio, uh, story interactions, video, um, even slideshows that flip through and give you just that added level of, of getting more content for what you're typically found in, in your printed version. I think the best uh, example to start with is, is children's books. When you look at the e-reading opportunities that are out there for children right now, there's nothing that's engaging that really allows children to latch on and follow along. If you're looking for uh, a highly graphical book such as uh, you know, some, a Disney title or something similar, uh, there's nothing that really delivers that, that impact without having to go and buy a specific device. And Blio is a software application that runs across multiple platforms and multiple devices and delivers that emotionally engaging experience to children. Um, I can go through and, and show a quick example of uh, Disney content, actually. And what we have here is you can see a, a two-page spread uh, that shows full color. Um, and we can even do a read aloud uh, that has studio recorded audio synced up. So as you click the play button, after losing to Doc, lightning works. It actually highlights word for word as you go, and you can follow along and hear the characters read the story to you. Uh, and it really delivers that emotionally engaging, completely differentiated experience that you can find anywhere else. Uh, another example would be a textbook. Um, Blio delivers a, a variety of benefits to students uh, and, and the educational market as a whole. Uh, you get to go in and again see that that complex layout see your textbook completely recreated in digital format, but it allows you to go ahead and drill down into the different concepts of the book in terms of uh, engaging videos, um, even quizzes and, and chapter comprehension questions that go along and enhance the experience of reading that. Um, beyond that, note-taking capabilities, being able to highlight in multiple colors, bookmarks, and even online reference capabilities where you can go ahead and, and highlight a word and jump out to the web without ever leaving the page of the book that you're in. Baker and Taylor is very excited to be partnering with both KNFB Reading Technologies to bring a revolutionary e-reader in Blio to market and with Quark and Quark Express to give publishers the ability to lower the cost of production using their current set of design tools. This partnership obviously sounds like a very smart one to get publishers and designers up and running quickly in the digital marketplace. But what exactly does Quark Express 9 bring in terms of providing that rich, interactive content for the Blio e-reader? I'm going to hand it back to Dan again to demo this as well. The cool thing about Blio is that it allows us to use all of the rich design capability of Quark Express, but still publish it like a traditional e-book. Just like in App Studio, it's quick and easy to create interactive ebooks in Quark Express. With Blio, we always begin with a print layout, typically the same print production files you used for the print version of your book. Before we start tagging the interactivity in the Blio book, we need to set up some simple metadata about our publication. You just go to the layout menu and select the ebook metadata dialog and set up the various attributes of your publication, such as title, author, publisher, and so on. Then I want to set up my table of contents. So I'm going to use the new ebook table of contents palette that you'll find under the window menu. I need to add an entry for each page in my document that I want to appear in the Blio table of contents pop-up menu. So I just go to the page, click the New button on the palette, name that page, and click OK. All of the entries in this palette will now show up in the Blio e-reader. Now I'll add some interactivity like I did earlier for the iPad. It basically works the same way, except this time we're going to use the Blio interactive attributes dialog. We can right-click a picture box, go to Digital Publishing, Blio Interactivity. 
We need to specify the type of interactivity we want. In this case, we're going to add a slideshow. And then we browse to the assets that will go into that slideshow. We'll select the folder that contains our images and click Choose. Let's say I want to add a video. Just like before, I'll add a picture box. I'll go into the Blio Interactivity dialog, select Video, click the Browse button, select my video file, and that's all I have to do. The other interactive type that I can specify for Blio documents is a web overlay. A web overlay will show contents of a website or an embedded HTML file. Either way, the process is the same. I right-click a picture box, go to Digital Publishing, Blio Interactivity, set the type to either URL or HTML. In the case of URL, I enter a URL address online that I want to display in that view. For HTML, that's going to be an embedded file, so I have to browse for the HTML file and check whether or not I should include all other assets within that folder. When I export my Blio file, all of these interactive behaviors will be included automatically. One of the other cool features of Blio is that it can display a reflow view of my entire book in addition to the rich layout view that we've designed in Cork Express. In version 9, we've added a new dedicated workspace for the creation of reflow content. This is the content that sits behind my rich layout that's shown in views like the Blio reflow view or when I export reflow only formats such as EPUB. You access the reflow view by selecting the view menu and going down to reflow view. You'll see here it'll open up my content in a new window that wraps based on the size of the window, just as it would in a traditional e-reader. We can even view the reflow view and the rich layout view side by side to see how they compare to each other. In reflow view, we don't have direct formatting control over our text. The tags on this palette allow us to assign semantic meaning to the paragraphs in our reflow view. For example, here, I'm going to select the text forward and assign the chapter title tag. I'll select by Brian Dennehy and select the author byline tag. The final representation of reflow content is up to the reader. So this is not a full WYSIWYG view of our content. The goal while working in reflow view is to clean up the text and tag it with its meaning and put it in sequence or the order in which it will appear in the reader. Let's take a look at how I got this content into the reflow view. You start in the rich layout view. We'll open the reflow tagging palette from the window menu. In this palette, we can tag text boxes and pictures to include in reflow and manipulate their order. In this case, I've already tagged up the first couple of chapters in my book. Let's take a look at how we did it by tagging up the next chapter. The first thing I'll do is to create a new article on the reflow tagging palette and give it a name. In this case, we're going to do chapter two. Under that article, I'll go through my layout and select components that I want to add to that section of my book and click the Add Component button on the Reflow Tagging Palette. Whenever I want, I can select those components and click the Show in Reflow View button to switch to the Reflow View or the Show in Layout button to switch back to the Rich Layout View. Once I have the Reflow View set up, I can also export it in the EPUB format for publishing to standard ebook platforms like Apple's iBooks. For publishers who want a fully automated EPUB workflow, we also have enterprise class products like XML Author and Cork Express Server for true content first structured workflows. Between App Studio, Blio, and EPUB export, Cork Express 9 has all your bases covered for easy digital publishing. Clearly, from everything we've just seen, the, the possibilities that this gives to designers are absolutely astounding.
So in addition to all these new digital design and publishing features, Gavin, perhaps you could give us an overview of some of the other features that you're introducing with Quark Express 9. Sure, Mark. We know one of the main reasons creative professionals use Quark Express is its efficiency in making common design tasks easy. And under the heading of design-driven automation, we're going to show you some features that we think will make you even more efficient. With conditional styles, you can automatically style content based on powerful styling rules. Once applied, the conditional styles are automatically employed as you type and uniquely can do things like move backwards through your text. For example, go to the end of this text run and apply this formatting to the last paragraph or even the last sentence or character of my story. You can use callouts to have boxes and groups move and position themselves automatically with text. Each callout is anchored to a particular spot in a text story called a callout anchor. And when a callout anchor moves to a new page or spread, the callout moves with it. Our new, and some might say long overdue, bullets and numbering feature combines easy to apply preset styles and the control that you would expect from Quark Express. We also know you're going to have a lot of fun with ShapeMaker to create millions of unique shapes, such as boxes with different corners, configurable waves, polygons, stars, spirals, and more. All of the settings are highly customizable and can be saved as presets, and real-time previews make it easy to see what you're creating. ImageGrid, which is a huge time saver. You can import a folder of images into Quark Express and automatically build catalogs of images with a variety of layouts and labeling options. Linkster enables you to unlink and relink text boxes, maintaining the current text flows. Cloner is the smartest and the most efficient way to clone design elements, both across pages, but even across different layouts or projects. And Story Editor provides a word processor-like view right within Quark Express 9. To access a full list of what's new in Quark Express 9, go ahead and visit quark.com, where you can also sign up for one of our free e-seminars on Quark Express 9. Which begs the question, Gavin, when can people get their hands on Quark Express 9? Quark Express 9 is going to be available simultaneously in all languages and all countries in just a few weeks' time. You'll be able to buy it both direct from Quark as well as from our network of authorized resellers and distributors worldwide. Now, App Studio for Quark Express, which enables you to publish to the iPad, is going to be available as a free update for all Quark Express 9 users within 90 days. Now, if you're not already a Quark Express 8 user, the great news is if you buy Quark Express 8 any time between now and when Quark Express 9 ships, you're going to be able to upgrade to Quark Express 9 free of charge. In fact, anyone that's bought Quark Express 8 since the beginning of this year is going to be entitled to a free upgrade to Quark Express 9. Just go ahead and visit our website, and you'll find details there on how to redeem your free upgrade. Lastly, a product like Quark Express 9 doesn't come to market in isolation, as well as upgrades to Quark Express Server, Quark Copy Desk, Quark Publishing System, and Quark Web to Print System, we have a network of partners around the world that will also be ready with Quark Express 9 support simultaneously the day that Quark Express 9 ships. So Gavin, Dan, PG, and Ray, this has been, uh, certainly for me, and I hope for all of you watching, a fascinating introduction to how Quark is making digital design and publishing a reality. I'd like to hand back to you, Ray, for a few concluding thoughts. Thanks, Mark. Just about 30 years ago, Quark helped drive the first publishing revolution. Today, Quark is very pleased and proud to deliver Quark Express 9, a tool that you can use to help drive the digital publishing revolution. Thank you for your time today, and I invite you to visit our website, quark.com, to learn more about Quark Express and how Quark can help you drive the digital publishing revolution.